Kathy, you know, I wish I had been here before because mm -hmm. I'm putting together a team and we're going to submit to, to the state, state bar oh, yeah. a proposal that every attorney who's licensed in the state right. is required to take one hour every year of counseling or a mental health che uh, checkup. You know, oh wow! We we have to do fifteen hours of continuing legal yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. and three hours yep. of uh, uh, almost every profession. You've got some kind of continuing ed or professional development. You know, you have to take absolutely. But you're right. Well, like teachers. Yes. Yeah, you know, we used to, you had to have your professional development hours, but there was nothing was ever about mental health. Am so, I going to think of the strain? You know, as a teacher that you have when it comes to mental health even and again it, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got depression or anxiety or anything like that it, it's just why why not have a little checkup and tune up make sure everything's okay especially since addiction anxiety depression oh, yeah. are so much ha ha higher amongst the attorney population than the general population out there and that's there. interesting why is that uh because of well, one, a number of attorney, attorneys are incredibly dysfunctional, like me, for example. <laughs> but I, I think because of the stress and the demands of the job, the financial demands, the you know the, the high student loans most have when oh, they come yeah. out of law school, and the demands for a, a excellence that the practice of law requires from its practitioners. And so right. as a result, you get so caught up in doing your job that you sometimes forget about right. life. That's true, and I think I think you can. I think that can happen in so many different. I, again, I, there's just if you go in for your, you know to get your um, blood pressure checked, your um, cholesterol, all that kind of stuff. Go go in and just say, hey, I need to touch base. These are the things I've been dealing with this year, and sometimes just even having a conversation, and especially for people who won't open up to, don't have a friend or a confidant or a loved one they can open up to. Yes. To be able to go in and say, here's what I'm dealing with, and no judgment is passed. Oh, absolutely. Like, and that's huge. Yes. That's and huge. with attorneys, we look for every advantage in a case. So, of course, if you know the other attorney is ha having I I issues with depression or anxiety yeah. or addiction, there are a lot of attorneys who will use that against them in a case. If, if we're required... To have mental health treatment right. every year, that's going to start to remove a little bit of I that think that's a, I think that's a great idea. It, One it's, minute. It's going to be a long uh, uh, uphill fight because the state bar sometimes are very slow to implement things. But, but at least, at least you're you're starting. It's a start, absolutely. You're starting. So I'm I am thrilled about Mr. Webb being on on board. Yeah, I'm a very very, unique, very excited to hear hear what he has to say. And and. As we talked, I pulled up pictures of him on the web, and I'm looking at, at him, and all I'm thinking is he looks exactly like Jeffrey Lebowski oh, from the Big really? Lebowski. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a great look. Oh, oh and do we, have, do we have him on? Are you, uh, is, he on is he on with us, Patty? I don't know that he's here yet. Michael? I, yes, I'm here. Oh, fantastic. There he is. <laughs> well, we'll come back. Yeah. We've got about 10 seconds. We'll come back. Um, uh, we'll introduce seconds. you and bring you in. So Good morning and welcome back to J.P. Kathy and the crew here on 1160 AM KBDT News Talk Sports. And it is currently 834. It's 41 degrees outside. It's going to get warmer today. We're going to have a high of 68 and a low of 47. So you decide, air conditioner, heater, which one are you going to do today? And of course, coming up tonight at 11 o'clock, we've got Charlie Jones America, our nation's very best late night talk show. Again, only on 1160 AM. KBDT News Talk Sports, and we are super excited. We've had a little bit of an extended um, version today of our Tuesday Mental Health Moment, which is brought to you every week, every Tuesday at 834 from the Morgan Foundation, Something for Kelly, and Acadia, and we just can't thank them enough for making this happen on our show. And um, Steve and Patty, y'all have just done such a phenomenal job of bringing experts 
to the crew so we can help people who are in need. And I'm sorry, if you say that you've never had a mental health issue either yourself or with a loved one, you are not telling the truth because everybody has everybody's touched by this and and we're so excited to bring this conversation and put it out there and uh, you know talk about a subject that's been taboo for way too long and let's just talk about it like we do diabetes or cancer or financial you know uh, advice bring that conversation out so if Steve if you will introduce our guest absolutely we are so thrilled today to have Michael Webb, the director of the Heritage Counseling Associates, with us. Michael, are you on the air right now? Yes, yes, I am. Hi, thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, thank you for being on. Thank you for being on. And Steve and Patty, Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let them, I'm going to turn some of the questioning over to them, but they've said that you've got a very unique approach. So the crew, we are, we are waiting with bated breath to hear what you have to say. So no pressure, no pressure. (laughs) Michael, yeah. If, if, if you can tell, if you can tell us a bit about you, the type of practice you have, let's, let's start with that. Sure. I've been in practice for 18, going on 19 years, started out in substance abuse, and did that for about 10 years during that time. I was a counselor, assistant director, made it up to director, did a lot of training of counselors during that time. For the last nine years or so, I've been in practice with my wife, who's also a therapist, Holly Webb, and we work primarily with addictions, eating disorders, and trauma, traumatic grief, compulsive behaviors. And then I kind of branch off and do a lot of relationship work and family work with the families of people whose loved one is struggling with a mental illness or disorder, such as addiction or an eating disorder. So, um, so that, that's Michael, me. Uh-huh. Uh, this is Patty. I, I know we're um, all on the phone here, or not all, but some of us are on the phone <laughs> here. So um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the holidays, anxiety, depression, and could you help the the listeners here understand about the difference between seasonal affective disorder and holiday depression? Oh, sure. So seasonal seasonal affective disorder has everything to do with simply exposure to the sun, that during the the fall and winter months, people just aren't out as much, and as a result of that, they're not getting enough sunlight and it's creating a, you know, electrochemical situation with them where they're experiencing depression. Exposure to light will actually alleviate seasonal affective disorder, whereas holiday depression is a completely different situation. I had a call coming in. I tried to get rid of it there. Uh, <laughs> That so happens. Like, stop beeping, stop beeping, please. I'm on a, I'm still on a radio talk. Um, so with holiday depression and anxiety, this is, it, it strikes at the heart of the sense of relationship and community and family and just how connected we feel. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on people during the holiday season to do something, to buy things and maybe even you know invite people over or strengthen their bonds and with community and with family and friends and on on the surface that all sounds great you know we we need bonds with with our family our friends and our community and a, a period of time where the whole idea is to strengthen those bonds and reaffirm those relationships it sounds like a great idea but most of our emotions come from what we believe. And if I have a belief that somehow I'm not good enough, not lovable, or I'm not lovable enough, then when you consider it, there being a season where the whole idea is for me to create stronger bonds with community and with family and with friends, and I don't feel like I'm very good at that, then I'm going to have to do something really spectacular to make up for how I, my sense of unlovableness of not being good enough. Michael, you know, it's interesting, two 
nights ago, we were watching a movie called uh, A Bad Mom's Cri Christmas, and one of the moms was just over the top in decorating her daughter's house and bringing entertainers in and a big party and food, and that was obviously her trying to m make up for the anxiety and insecurity she had. Can you talk a little bit about those types of feelings of being anxious and wanting to be perceived as the absolute best and how that can just overtake us? Well, so perfectionism, it, where the idea of it, you know, is that somehow I'm going to do something that's better than is humanly possible, basically. You know, it's an outcropping of our culture and, you know, I had to say it, but also true of Hollywood of movies, of TV, where they're able to make everything and everyone look perfect. Oh, well, Mike, we Michael, you know what, even it, 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 take it a step past Hollywood and the movies and TV shows where everything's done and everything's fantastic. Social media, you don't see anybody, like right now, we're kind of in transition. We've got boxes everywhere, you know, trees up, a few of the decorations are up, but we're in that transition mode. Well, I'm not posting that on Facebook, but then you see everybody once the trees up and every ornament is exactly in place and it's nighttime and the lights are lit. Guess what people post? Everything. Exactly. It, it looks like everybody lives at the White House. Yes, exactly. And, and so we start comparing ourselves to what we see on social media, the movies, TV, and that crystallizes this idea that if I'm I'm not good enough, but if I do things right enough, if I please the right people, if I overcome or disguise my inherent imperfection, then and only then am I going to be acceptable because I've either made up for or disguised or hidden my flaws. Michael, to a certain extent, though, we all have that type of anxiousness or fear with in us, and we can use that in very productive ways. Can you talk a little bit about the signs we look at when it's when it goes from being productive and inspirational to very debilitating? Oh, absolutely, Steve. The, just being awake and engaged in life is going to create anxiety because we don't control this world. There's very little that we do control. And so that anxiety, that pressure, if it's at a reasonable level, allows us to have a little bit of extra energy and motivation to work harder, to strive for excellence in things. And, and there's really nothing wrong with that striving. It's when we have a criterion based on just impossible standards that we have to meet. That's when things start to snowball and become debilitating and even paralyzing. Well, and, so, and, could and you talk and, a minute and about Patty, Patty, Patty real fun. quick, I want to because this is so. I love it when when this strikes a chord with with um, with you listening right now. And Gail uh, from the crew said that um, this was her first Thanksgiving where she cooked everything. She said it was ridiculously stressful. She said she did not handle it the way she would have liked to. She said I missed a lot of visiting and family time. And Gail, thank you for being bold enough to share that because I think a lot of people feel like that after the fact. Kathy, you're so right. I saw that up on the comments as well, and I was thinking on behalf of our listeners as well as um, their family, uh, Michael, could you share with us uh, signs of these symptoms so that we might, if we recognize them in ourselves, begin to say, what should I do to, to knock this off at the pass? What signs or symptoms should we watch for? So I guess to start out with, you know, talking about the signs and symptoms, you know, generally people who are in the grip of, I hate to use the word, but I'm a little nervous. It's the only one that's coming to mind. Toxic anxiety, anxiety that's gone beyond helpful, is those people will start expending an awful lot of energy in unproductive ways. Busy work, worrying, fretting about things, sometimes compulsive behaviors, surfing the web, looking for ideas, looking on social media. Um, they're, they've possibly already done everything that they can do but the anxiety tells them they just have to do more and they just have to make it perfect. And so 
they compulsively return to working on it and trying to make it better. And one of the so, ways to look at... Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I, I was just thinking that um, a little bit of it is normal. A little bit of it is just performance anxiety, you know, in-laws are coming or something like that. But at what point is it kind of uh, a red flag for somebody to say to a spouse or a friend, uh, let's step outside and get some cool air for a minute or, you know, recognize it in yourself. At, at what level do you say, I, I need to take a break from this? And if so, how do you do it? Well, so the best way to gauge that, I think, is just by asking ourselves the question, have I lost perspective? Now, why did I bring all these people to my house? Is it just so I can see them? Or is it because I want to strengthen and build those relationships and spend time with those people? And where my energy and my time is going is where my attention is. And if it's all on cooking, decorating, making sure everything's perfect, I've lost perspective on what my actual goal in that situation is. That's and a great question. That's, that's a really good point. And being able to uh, take a step back and literally breathe. Anxious people breathe shallowly and it's not good for you. And if you breathe a couple of three deep breaths, Literally, if you breathe in for three seconds, hold it three seconds, breathe out for three seconds. Do this with your eyes closed. It's going to calm your mind and give you a chance to think and as a reflect rather than think or analyze. Reflect on, is my behavior, is what I'm doing right now consistent with my actual values and goals? Michael, a, a, a question I have along those lines. When, when, my, I'm just a train wreck here. Michael. So, 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 me, so if that just blasted your eardrum as you're driving in traffic right now, that was just Steve's phone dro dropping on the hardwood floor in the studio. Rest in <laughs> Great pieces. sound effects. There Everybody's awake now. <laughs> Michael, yeah, just one. When we're in the grip of anxiety and fear, a lot of times we know that we feel that on an ongoing basis. And yet sometimes it's right beneath the surface and we're not even aware of it. For example, this past weekend on a Sunday I'm going out to get the the annual Christmas tree and find one and it's on top of the car and driving back home the tree begins to slide a little bit and I look up and I see the trunk beginning to slide and the, then my son starts to send me a number of text messages about a very important issue with him that I'm involved in helping him but yet I'm trying to get the tree home. It's sliding off the car. Real life issues come up, and I just snap. So here I am dropping the f bomb at my ah. at my phone, <laughs> and this these emotions I didn't even know just came out of seemingly n nowhere. Are there things that people can do to try to identify that within them and address it before it explodes? Yeah, before you snap and say some say before you say something that you can't take back. So, one of the things, and I'll just speak from personal experience, one of the things that I notice is that I'm moving faster. I'm bumping into things. I'm... Oh, go I ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We, we've, oh, okay. so, yeah, you're, you're okay. <laughs> you can... Okay, I was, I was trying to figure... And so, what people will do as the stress increases... They begin to focus on, like you were saying, Steve, on my priority here is. And the term that best fits this is a sense of maintaining mindfulness. That Oh, and, yes, I, and, and mindfulness, I really, because there's a lot that goes into that. So, so when we come back, we're going to be talking more with Michael Webb about mindfulness and what you can do and how you can help yourself or a loved one who is struggling with mental illness or with anxiety or depression. We're JP, Kathy, and the crew, and we'll be right back. Facebook Live is yeah, and Facebook Live can still hear you. I know it goes super fast, and when we come back, we'll have we'll have about five minutes, and so let's talk about kind of giving people hope. What is something you can do right now if you're suffering? Um, you know, some uh, tell us some of the unique ways. Like I love the breathing thing. That's something we we all you always forget. 
Oh. Uh, we, when you said that, I was like, oh gosh, breathe deep, you know, but talk about some of the different things and I know, and let's go, we'll, we'll bring it back in with mindfulness. I think that's so important to um, let people know what that means and what it looks like. Oh, you're popular. Well, my, my, <laughs> my, my stupid phone, it's an iPhone six and I use it to make phone calls into text and it's, it's a phone. Yeah. But because it is so old, when you turn the ringer all the way off, it never goes off. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, that's Apple wanting you to buy a new one. So, my, so Michael, if you'll, yeah, sure. if we, we've still got three minutes until we come back in our Facebook Live audience. And this is a segment that, um, that uh, the Mental Health Moment folks take. And so the whole thing will be put out and shared on Facebook. So if there's anything else you can think of right now that you want to talk about or go into more detail. M Michael, in yeah. fact, I, I was going to ask you, let me jump in real fast here. At what point do you start to recommend that pharmaceut pharmaceutical drugs get involved? Yeah. That's a great question. So, so you know, pharmaceuticals, you know, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, antipsychotics, one of the ways I look at this is that when our system is, we all have a window of tolerance for emotional pain and for physical pain. And what we want to try to do is keep ourselves within that window of tolerance where we're still functioning, we're still processing. And so sometimes people will need a, a medicine that will bring them into that window of tolerance so they can process through what is being painful at that time. What's that internal conflict or that damaged relationship? If it's overwhelming every time they try to connect with it, they're not going to be able to process through it. So an antidepressant or something along those lines can help lower the intensity of the emotions, bringing it into that window of tolerance where they can actually process and deal with it. But so often people will get on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication, and the idea is they're going to be on this for life, and that's the solution to the problem. Mm. And that is the problem because... Uh, ultimately, we, what we want is connection with people. Relationships are everything. Right. And right. Uh, there is a study done, uh, the, the Harvard Longevity Study, which was a 75-year study, longest in the history that we know of, of what makes people One happy minute. and live a long time. And more than money, more than career, more than cancer or any other physical cause, strong long-lasting relationships with people that know you and love you are the primary predictable predictor of longevity in life. Uh, that, that, makes, that makes so much sense, you know, and, and it's interesting, you know, you're talking about that you don't necessarily, now sometimes there's situations where you can't, I mean, if you're bipolar, if you've got certain disorders, you need to, you need to have some regimen of medication. But, um, you know, I think it's interesting, and I, I'm not afraid to admit this, I asked my neurologist if she could put me on antidepressants while I'm getting over my um, concussion. She said, no, it's situational, and she told me to slow down. So, but, you know, it's one of those things, every so often you've got to reach out and ask seconds. for help, you know. And we'll be right back in about 10 yeah. seconds. Welcome back to JP, Kathy, and the crew here on 1160 AM KBDT News Talk Sports. We come to you live every Monday through Friday. That's live. That's a fun way to say live. Okay, there we go. Like Broadway. Uh, every Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. And we are so proud. Every Tuesday, we bring you our mental health moment with the Something for Kelly Foundation, the Morgan Foundation, and Acadia. And Michael Webb is our guest today. Super excited to have him. And right before the break, Michael, um, you mentioned mindfulness. So let's talk about that. So... We were talking about mindfulness and in related to what can I do to keep myself from freaking out over the holidays and over the anxiety and the pressure. And one of them is being mindful about why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, these people that I'm wanting to buy gifts for or invite to my house or have a party for, it's because I care about them. And being mindful and being able to stay focused on the reason I care, I want these people in my life is because they enrich my life and hopefully I enrich theirs. How can what I'm doing, my, where I'm spending my time and my money, better 
serve that purpose of enriching their lives, my life, and our relationship. And that's a good and, point. And so, what, how, what, okay, so even when it's not holiday times, everybody has the time when they feel overwhelmed. What are some, what are some tips? What are some things that, that we can practice? Let's, let's give the crew hope and bring them something that they can take to their loved ones or into their life. So we have something available to us at all times that is pretty much the best elixir for life that there is. And that's other people, deep, meaningful relationships, being able to just spill our guts to somebody, to everything seems bigger and worse when it's in our head. And having people in your life that you can just let it all hang out and be real with will help keep the lid on things, help the pressure not get beyond that level of tolerance. And those relationships over time increase our sense of happiness and security regardless of everything else. Michael, but how do we find the uh, trust to be able to trust someone else with some of the most intimate thoughts or feelings we ha have, though? Well, hey, this is sometimes, depending on how you know, intimate the thought is, sometimes people will seek out a counselor or a therapist, uh, a pastor, but the only way to build trust with somebody is to start trusting them. Um, but in the aggregate, the risk of not being open and connected with people is much greater than the risk of betrayal most of the time. Interesting. Um, Michael, you know, we, and right before you jumped on, we talked about how Cyber Monday just exploded and billions were spent in that one day. And yet, a lot of times I know we try to almost buy affection and buy trust, especially at this time of the year. Can you talk real briefly about maybe how de-emphasizing the financial aspect of Hanukkah and Christmas, if, if that would help with that anxiety and fear as well? Yeah, you know, it's true. Money cannot buy love, but we sure try. And it's a limiter. Uh, you know, if I'm not, if I don't have much money, then I can't express much love. Is that it? I, you know, I cannot. You know, I can imagine being in that mindset. However, that's missing the point. That um, the consumerism and I got to go back to social media, replacing actual relationships with people. I may have 300 friends, but is it one of them that I can call and tell them I'm having a bad day? or that I'd love to send them something awesome, but I'm broke right now. I just want to call and tell you I love you, I appreciate you in my life. That being able to step out of what the media and social media say is the way to express love and connection and validate other people and just ask yourself the question, what do I want to do? How do I want to show these people? that I care. Michael, if, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you? If, if you look up Heritage Counseling Associates or Holly Webb LPC, Michael Webb LPC, it'll take you to our website and to our listings online. And uh, that's probably the best way to go about it. Fantastic. Well, and, and if you can go on our Facebook live feed, Michael, and put your information, um, a lot of people have said great guests and they appreciate your comments. And we thank you so much for being part of JP, Kathy and the crew and our mental health moment. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Michael, thanks. And could you hold, hold on just a second after we go off air? We'll do, a little after, we'll do a little after Facebook show. We are JP, Kathy, and the crew. We come to you live every Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. Have an absolutely blessed day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right. And, and Michael, we're off of the air, the radio airwaves, but we're still on Facebook Live in case you have any final thoughts. So I said something earlier that might appear a little controversial. It might cause people to go, huh? We, we love we love controversy. <laughs> we love controversy. <laughs> that, that, that when building trust with people, the risk of betrayal of confidential information 
is not as dangerous as the risk of keeping it to yourself. And all you've got to do is look at our current statistics. Right now, the life expectancy in America is falling specifically because of drug overdose and suicide. Interesting. These are diseases of despair. And this has never happened in the history of, that we have recorded. And those illnesses, those emotional afflictions can be alleviated by the feeling that it's okay, that you're okay, that life has joy and pleasure in it and people care about you. And uh, Michael, that's why I'm saying that. Oh, but, you know, but what, and I think that's, I think real quick, Steve, I, I think that's huge. Um, you know, I, my daughter who is 20 um, has gone to the funeral of two people she knew that committed suicide. Um, one right when she started high school, um, another one um, while she was in high school. Um, just they, um, she has a, a girl that she knows who they thought had died of maybe drinking and drug combination or something like that. But somebody went back and looked at that girl's Instagram page and she had changed her bio to read sorry. Mm -hmm. And so they're not so sure that it wasn't an overdose. And I just think, you know, that's, you know, that's just in my little corner of the world, you know, but you hear about this. I was with a, a gentleman who is dean of students at Collin College the other day um, for a particular group of students. And he was talking just about it just in the last five to six years, what you're talking about, suicide and these acts of desperation have gone up like, he, I think, I, and I don't want to quote him, but I want to say he said like two to 300%. Yes. Colleges and universities, their, their mental health system is being taxed because the last couple of generations of people who have gone to college simply don't have the tools to cope with basic life. And, I'm putting this squarely at the feet of smartphones and social media. Yep. That as soon as they came out about a decade ago, mental health issues among teens skyrocketed. And specifically, what I see happening is people replace actual face-to-face, eye-to-eye relationships with relationships through social media. And that just doesn't do it for us. We have yeah. we have neurons in our brain called mirror neurons, which literally take in information about relationships and reality and give us the feeling of connection with people. And you don't get that from text and pictures on the screen that are impersonal. Michael, and so likely a lie. <laughs> ah, there you go. Michael, again, you know, uh, some people may not have heard your contact information at the end of the show. Wonder if you could go into that one last time, and then I'm going to talk real briefly about who we're going to ha have on for the next few weeks, and you'll get Absolutely. to go. Oh, sure. Well, uh, if you look up Michael Webb or Holly Webb, LPC, in Keller, Texas, or Heritage Counseling Associates in Keller, Texas, It'll take you to our website. You'll get our phone numbers. You can email, text, or call us. And, and what city did you say that was? Keller? In Keller, 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 okay. Yeah. Miss Patricia, North Fort Worth. are you on still? I'm still right here with you folks. This was a very good show. Thank you for joining us, Michael. Yes. Yeah, so oh, you're, you're great. Right. So next week, we have one of my favorite people on air, Dr. Stephanie Setliff from oh, ERC. Yeah. Oh, I know Dallas. her. I love her. We I like just, her. I just love her to death. We're gonna, we're gonna try to make sure she's here in studio with us. And if Patty and I have to drive by her house, drag <laughs> her out, throw her in the car. Do that. Absolutely, we will. The week, we the, will. the week after that, we have our Acadia week, and we're having a person on to talk about depression and the holiday blues and how to address it and how to just keep yourself uh be alive and beginning to thrive that much more and finally assuming we're on on december 24th pat uh kathy do you know if we're going to be on that i don't i don't think we'll be on christmas eve okay. so um if we I, I think that's we have i think we have a little bit of a break and we may have to adjust we we may have you guys come in on monday or something instead so that, but what, yeah we we're, we're still working out our holiday schedule that would be great because we're we're finding an expert to talk about spirit spirituality 
and mental health and the role that spirituality plays in mental health recovery. Which and is, that's, this is the time of year to talk absolutely about it. Absolutely it, it is. is. But, uh, yeah. Michael, Could again, I recommend Dr. Stephen Vasquez for that? Oh, okay. And what, what's his last? Vas- Vasquez? Dr. Stephen Vasquez. Will you get that? Will you get his information to Steve? Yes. That'd be I've fantastic. Taken a training from him about how to know, how to be able to tell the difference between pathology and spiritual experiences. Oh, That's a very important distinction. There's really a lot has. of. Yeah, there's a lot written about that, and I would be very interested in his comments on that. Absolutely. And finally, one last thing. Michael, I'm so proud uh, proud of you, despite your wife's concerns, that profanity, you know, is a big part of it. And believe me, brother, I can relate to that. You did fantastic. So you can tell yes, your wife thank you, you knocked so, yes, it out of you, the park. You, you passed. <laughs> yeah, I, I was good. Yeah. I was mindful about that. I like, I don't want to get anybody There's a the word but, mindful. I love it. <laughs> That's but, great. Yeah, I should but, because, yeah, it's my, some of my favorite words are, are not, you know, they're offensive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. All righty, that's, uh, that's all. I've got kids. So, Pat, yeah. Patty, do you have anything else from the thriving metropolis of Go- Gotham? We're having a good day today. The sun is out and all is right with the world. Have a great day, guys. I love it. Thanks, Patty. So, travel safe. And reach out to Money in the Bank with Frank, Frank Kushner. Yeah, you need to, yeah, y'all need to get together when you're back in January. I'll ask you for his number. <laughs> and I will give it to you. <laughs> All right, take Sounds care, like Patty. Fun. And thank you, All Michael. Right, y'all Michael, good one. thanks again. Stay, stay mm-hmm. safe for you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye to the crew. Love y'all. We will see you tomorrow. And everybody have a fantastic day. Mwah. Is, oh, it's Giving Tuesday. Yes, it is. Yes, so so get out there and give to the organization, Charity of Your Choice. We've got the Morgan Foundation. We've got uh, something for Kelly that are taking donations currently. Absolutely. In fact, you can text MOMO2019, that's M-O-M-O-2019 to 44321, and your tax-deductible donation will be uh, we thank you so much. It's going to help us implement a council. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hang up. go. See you guys later. Bye. Wow. Uh, it's like, ooh, that, there you go. That was loud.